Hello once again for the first time audience. I don't know what this game is, but it got really freaking high reviews, so I'm gonna freaking play it and die in it. Again and again and again and again and again. The end is never, the end is never, the end is never, the end is never loading. Never. It took me a while to even get this thing to be capturable, because you launch it from Steam and for some reason my Elgato just like panics. Which means it's some kind of, like something mysterious about this game. So I had to do it and capture it. Oh dude, it's freaking Good lord, this is in-depth. Loading. Stanley's entire parable. Do you know what Stanley's parable is? <laughs> it's everything that is Stanley. His brain is loading onto your computer. Only part of it is dense. The rest is mostly hollow. <laughs> Stanley's kind of... He's, you know, I don't want to say anything bad. You don't, he'll hear me. You have AI now. Your computer has AI. So anyways, um, don't... You should move out. You're probably going to die. Oops. Click this is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. It's like lost. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. It's just a box and a level editor. He lives in And then one level day, something box. very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. The Stanley Parable. He at his desk for nearly an hour voice. when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Toby Games gained control of Stanley, thus dooming him to a horrible short life, a painful... Let's do subtitles. Option, video, sub... There, there. Sometimes it's in video, dude. Maybe it's kind of freaking... Now it's closed captioning. I guess that's... Pff. Freaking subtitles, too. Freaking. Um. Um. What, Martha? All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Um. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. What no matter happened? how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co workers. What the? F I mean, the computers are a trace, I would say, but two coffee cups, too. This person's ridiculous. I'm not surprised that person bolted out of this freaking building. Freaking two copy, freaking non stop. Always full, too. They're just always drinking those two. Did that just turn off? Um, oh, crouch is control. Dude, now I know. Crouch is control. Crouch is control. Crouch control. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the <laughs> but it didn't make a single difference. Shut up. Nor did it advance the story in any way. I got it, dude. I got it. You want to go to the freaking meeting room? Done. Thank you for telling me that. I appreciate it. Is this the meeting room? Because I don't know. How do I freaking know? I don't. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Freaking British people think they can tell me what to do. Stanley decided to be a rebel and he'll be killed in painful death. Toby Games ended Stanley's beautiful lives and families disowned Stanley. Not very manly, Stanley. Uh, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all. Is this a Just horror to spend game? a few I'm here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Oh, dude, that could have been a pun, but it's not because they can't actually give me drinks. Okay, there's coffee everywhere, dude. That's the. Oh. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took what the first open job. door on his left. I mean, I should do that, right? Because what are we going to have? 
Uh, I can't, dude. I'm sorry. I just want to see what happens. If you're lying right now, stop. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. I feel like that's like a Gladys, like a, an English Gladys, and they want to throw me off because, like, she had that robot voice. He just sounds like a normal person. Warning, do not jump from the cargo. Will it to me motion which cause death? Penalty is $1,000, and you'll also die. So that's the biggest penalty. Look, Stanley, I think and there's money your family will have to pay. Here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. All right. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Okay, now, fine. I'm not asking for me. Tell me what to do. I'm asking for her. Is that a threat? You threaten me? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem you me? yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. Let's do it. She's been waiting. I want to see what he's talking about. I have no idea. Like, I just happened to just not follow instructions. Where is she, dude? Tell me where to go. I'll freaking do it. Tell me where to go. <laughs> That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another... Done, dude. Pick up the phone. Whiteness. Girl, it's me, Stanley. Are you my girlfriend? Do you want a date? Hey, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. Oh, I love you so much, oh, baby. Right. Okay, baby. You have a beautiful voice. You should sing. Right, you should now, sing. I want you to come in and tell me all about your oh, dear fans. Dear. What robot? <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? You Who want to commit their life to you? Son of a I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see you. something. Come inside. Let your voice you isn't as really cool as David Attenborough. Me. Hey, your voice isn't as cool as it never will be. Look at him. This is a very story about the death mighty of a man fine. named Stanley. Good morning, employee 47. Press I on your keyboard. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. Shut your face, hole. a job that demands nothing of him. And every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Press L. Why? Look at him there, pushing buttons, you doing exactly what he's told to do. You now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. You make me now sick. Now he's going home. You make me now sick. Narrator. He's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. I would totally press R. Mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk. Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown, fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever <laughs> happen to him. I so love TV. He began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined no that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Z to spend time with the boys. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. So it's all irrelevant. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to, to be stuck many here? possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it... The baby Spare game! Parable. Oh, okay. Press X to tell your kids a story. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he Holy relived it again. God. And then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. That's beautiful. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Oh yeah. But there is no answer. I love you. What the? How could there possibly be? Wait. In reality, all he's doing is pushing the what? same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. 
The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. So the press hard to tell her I loved her. Which life she is the disappeared. One. Press V to go to sleep. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay, no problem, dude. No problem. I did it. I did it. Can you uh, just me? I did it. How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand <laughs> that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? That's not what How I'm can doing. I get him to voice? see what I see. How can I make him look at himself? Freaking mirror, dude. Simple science. Question nothing. I'm not gonna do it this time. This time I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna freaking do it, dude. I'm not doing. It. I'm gonna sit here until the end of freaking time, dude. Talk to me. Talk to me, dude. Talk to me. I'm not doing it. I'm not freaking doing it. Ah! I suppose I can't. Not in the way Stupid. I want him to. Stupid. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose. What happens if you didn't freaking press it last time? Would it just sit there forever? So I suppose. It's gotta be what it is. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I feel I like I'm missing out on Perhaps. key story elements. Well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. Yeah, dude, just me. What? And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. What is going on? This is kind of awesome. <laughs> I'm going to pause it. That's a good stabbing point. Bless your face. If you sneeze during this parable, bless you. And uh, do you want me to keep playing this freaking eerie, mysterious game? Peace out.